Hey Webflow friends, today I wanna to share with you a cool new free clonable project that is gonna help you save time and build in Webflow more efficiently, and that is our starter project, Style Guide. Now, why do you even need a style guide? Well, in every web design project that you're gonna build in Webflow, you're going to use the same elements that every project uses. You're gonna use all the different typography elements from headings to different paragraph styles. You're always going to have brand colors and you're always going to have kind of containers and sections. And if you have a dedicated page on your website to manage all of these styles, you can do a really quick setup when you're starting out your project and that would help you, number one, build way faster and number two, manage it when you need to make edits it's going to be very, very easy to see all the different styles and edit them from one dedicated page. So you're welcome to clone this project. There's gonna be a link below this video. And let me give you a quick tutorial on what this style guide looks like and how to use it. Okay, so after you clone our starter project, you're gonna see this, which is basically just the instructions to watch this video. You're doing this, so you're good to go. Go to the style guide page to start editing. Okay, so the style guide is actually not on the home page, which we're gonna build the home page. It's actually on a hidden page, and you can see it's hidden because we have this icon of a draft, and then the style guide is here. So it's only visible to you, the designer. And this is what we have inside. So let me quickly uh, run you through what we have here, and then we'll start editing this and show you how to use this. First of all, we have typography. So this is the font we'll use on the website and the most used headline H1, H2, H3. There are six H's, but these are the most common and I don't wanna just clutter up your stuff. You'll probably never use H4 to six, so why put them here? Next, we have paragraphs, and then we have some styles for large paragraph and small paragraph. We we have, sometimes we'll need, you know, on a dark background, light text. So here we have a style for doing light text. And then we have some rich text, which we'll probably use on things like blog posts and things like that. We have a list here, and then we have our brand colors, which we'll use throughout the website. Then we have a few types of buttons, so a normal button, uh, a ghost button, and just a link button. And then we have them also on dark background. We have a form, and then we have some layout elements, which we always use on every project. So we always have section padding to make sure that, you know, the content on our website does not touch the edges of the screen. And we always have a container to make sure that the content is centered and has a maximum width so it doesn't get too wide where it's uncomfortable to read. And then a lot of times we have pop-ups throughout the website, so I've already set up everything here, including the interaction and the content, and it's going to be very easy to reuse this. So the way this, this is structured is we have actually editing instruction here on the left side, so you can actually hover and you have the instruction of what to do. So let's say that we have this website here in Figma that we're about to start designing, and we have styles here already set up, so we can see here H1, there's actually H1, H2, H3, there's a bunch of them here, um, and we have the colors already set up here, so we have the colors. Let's move on all these things into our Figma, uh, into our Webflow style guide. So it's very easy to build this website. We'll start off with the global font. So in this case, we can see it's, uh, if we click here, we can see this is Open Sans. In this case, we won't even have to load it um, because Open Sans is automatically loaded into Webflow. It's a Google font. But you'll see that if you want to globally change the font in this website, what we'll have to do is go to the body element. So we're gonna click here on the body element, and then we're going to edit body all pages. So we're gonna click here on the selector and body all uh, pages, and then we're going to change the font for the whole website. So we're gonna change to Open Sans. Now the next thing we're gonna do is set up the H1. So here what we need to do is click this and then select H1 heading, and then we're gonna figure out what is the size from here. We can see it's 70 on 103%. So we can go here and say 70 on 103% percent for the H1. And now we have the H1 ready. So we're gonna go through this and edit all of the uh, tags and all of these the same way. And you have the instructions here and then we can change the colors. Now the colors here are used with global colors. And that means that 
if we later on need to change them, we can just change the global color and it will change throughout the website so we don't have to ch edit gazillion elements and that's gonna save us a lot of time. So the same thing here, we're gonna pick up the color um, and we're going to copy it and we're going to edit this dark color with the new color and then it's going to change even throughout this, uh, you know, throughout this style guide. So this is how we're gonna edit the colors. And then we have these layout elements, of course. So here is section petting, and I've explained why we need it. And we need to, if we want to, and you can actually see if I'm going to do this, uh, you can see that we do have some padding, right? We do have some padding here on the section so that our content does not stick all the way. So if we want to add, edit that, we can go into the section padding. We have here section padding. We can select that and we can change that. And that's going to be a style. You can see it's changing here and you can visually see how much padding you have. This is going to be the default that you're gonna have on all of your uh, all of your sections. And same with container. So you can see here even visually that everything is contained within a container and you can see the container here. Now. By default, we've set it to 1100 pixels. And the reason we're not using Webflow's container is just because Webflow's container is not editable. That's why we have to create our own container. So right now it's set to 1100. We can of course change it to 1200 and you can see it changes everything that's within it. And these are elements. So now when I'm gonna go here into my homepage and of course I'm going to just delete everything that says delete here my process for start building is going to be very, very fast. I'm just going to throw in a section and always add section padding to it automatically with the padding that I've already have set up. And then I'm going to put in a container that I already have set up, right? So I already have these styles. So now I have a section and a container. And if I put in an H1 now, my H1 is already designed as well. And that's why things are gonna be very, very easy because all of the repeating elements, such as text elements and buttons are already set up throughout my style guide. So it's probably gonna take you like 20, 30, 40 minutes to do this initial setup, but then your whole build is going to be very, very fast. Now, what we have here with the pop-up is, you can see here, if I'm previewing this, you can click this, and it shows you how the pop-up is being opened. And it also explains how to copy this interaction to other pages. But the nice thing is that this pop-up is set as a, as, a, as a symbol. And that means that we can use this pop-up on multiple pages, but then we can come here and we can edit from the settings panel on the right. We can change to a new heading or a new body or you know a new button, or we can just double click this and edit this symbol once and all of the pages that has this pop-up, maybe it's a registration to your newsletter or whatnot, are going to change from one simple place. So this is really a great place to manage your pop-ups. This is something very common. And because pop-ups are naturally hidden, it's very hard to edit them. You know, you have to unhide them and you know edit them and then hide them again. So if you have your pop-ups managed here from the style uh, guide page, it's going to be much easier to edit and maintain it uh, visually here and seeing all the other styles as well. So I hope this is going to save you a bunch of time. Let me know in the comments if you like this style guide and if you have feedback on it. Uh, I worked very hard to keep it very, very simple. I know that there are other style guides out there that are more robust, but from my experience, you just have to waste either so much time deleting everything that's not necessarily on most of your pages or they are just too much work to handle. So to me, minimalistic style guide is the best and I really enjoy working with this one. I'd love to hear from you and I'll see you on the next video. Peace out.